to our channel so students in this video we will discuss the explanation of business economics of unit number 3 previously i have already uploaded the unit number 1 and unit number 2 explanation if you want means uh, please watch that video in this video we will discuss the complete uh, concept of unit number 3 which you are having in your syllabus of business economics okay the first one what the question i have given ma law of supply okay so this is the most important question what is law of supply what are its exemptions exceptions everything they are asking okay what is supply is nothing but the different quantities of product the different quantities of product which a consumer is willing to sell at various prices in a market that is called supply of a product in other thing the amount of quantity which a producer is willing to sell to the given price at a given particular period of time for example a price is a for example a product price is 10 rupees how much is the seller is asking a seller is willing to sell that product to the customer is law of supply what is this law of supply how you need to remember this law of supply means simple thing ma when price increases supply also increases when a price decreases supply also decreases same like in previous uh, unit 2 uh, we have discussed about weblin goods no when you are increasing price your product when you are increasing your price of uh, your product uh, automatically the supply will also increase that is the stuff i have wrote all these things in here see the law of supply means it deals with the functional relationship between supply and commodity when increase in price the quantity supply also increases when decrease in price the decrease uh, it will also decrease in supply also means when price increases supply also increases when price decreases supply also decreases okay the supply of a product increases when price increases and decreases that is the thing okay when other things other determinants what we are having that is the bill that is the thing we are having the constant nature but when you are increasing your price automatically the supply is also increase it okay so that is the thing that is the statement of law of supply okay next uh, what are the factors what are the factors and determinants we are having this law of supply means this you need to remember ma the formula of your law of supply what is means sx supply of x is equal to f of px pf py pz ot ps different things you are having means this is the thing we will call it as a determinants okay when your determinants is changing automatically your supply will also change when your supply increases demand also increases price also increases when price decreases supply also decreases because of its determinants what is sx is that thing but supply of good of x supply of good x px is nothing but price pf py is nothing but what are the price of other goods for example if you are uh, purchasing any type of um, brand uh, sorry not brand any type of biscuits for example you are buying a marigold okay what is the price of the other biscuits in the market like parlaji and uh, any type of thing so that is the commodity of the another product okay that is called pf or py pz is nothing but what are the factors of production are there p is nothing but objectives of producer t is technology and s is state of technology these are the determinants of the factors of product uh, supply ma next uh, what is the statement of law you need to remember what i have said when price is more quantity supply is also more when the price is 8 supply is 80 when price is 7 supply is 7 when price is decreasing automatically supply is also decreasing when price is increasing it from 4 to 8 you are increasing no automatically customers is also increasing from 40 to 80 means always a law of demand will slopes from left to to right upwards direction so in law of demand it will slopes like this no in law of supply it will slopes from left to to right upwards direction law of supply always goes to the upward direction only so that is the table and graph first introduction formula
statement of law of supply table and this graph is enough after making this uh, table and graph you need to explain about the table when price is 80 the supplier is 80 when price is 60 the supplier is 60 always the demand curve slopes upwards from left to right like that you need to elaborate your answer what are the exceptions exceptions is nothing but in what circumstances this law will never work out the first one we are having ma it is expected see clear clearly you see it is expected when there is a decrease in price then seller will sell more at present right see if it is increase in price the seller will sell less in the product stores what they are saying is nothing but here for example the price of a product the price of a product is decreasing from tomorrow onwards what seller will willing to do it will uh, he will will to sell more products today only because today if he are selling means he will get 100 rupees if tomorrow if he is selling that product means he will get only 80 rupees what he will will to do he will tell he will he is he will willing to do more number of sales today itself in that circumstances this law will never work out second one is if the level of technology changes technology changes means consumer taste and preference is changing means we can't do this law of supply next uh, any change in weather national and international also any disturbances we are occurring like coronavirus and any type of wars at that time the supply were uh, also very down the prices were increasing everything like that no in that case also this law will never work out okay second and the fourth one is wages of a labor what is this does means if you goes on increasing your labor wages automatically he or she will neglect their work right means when you increase your wages means for example previously you have keeping only 10 the 10000 to giving to your uh, like um, uh, maid and after that you are increased her salary to 20000 when you have increased her salary the performance of that maid is less compared to the previous one okay so mane ki ante like ippudu panjashiro like ekkuva pattuko manam preference ichi time theesko kali ga undu salary istha vale em chestaru vale em chestaru ante pan cheyakunda untunnam anamata baddakam ekku ayipothadi so that time this law will never work out okay what are the assumptions is nothing but rules what are the rules you need to follow cost of the production should be same and there should be no change in the techniques of the production you should not change any techniques what you should not change any uh, strategies there should be no speculation speculation is nothing but just now we have discussed no rep price increase aitundo ee rep price decrease avutundo ani cheppesi ee roju ekko gonukkodu meeru takko gonukkodu cheyadam okay in that type of also this law will never work out okay and the next question we are having ma indifference curve analysis what are the properties of indifference curve what is this indifference curve is nothing but indifference curve is also known as locus of point what is this called is locus of point representing combination of two substitute goods with yields same level of satisfaction means when you are using two substitutes when your commodity when you are using two substitutes to fulfill your satisfaction that is called indifference curve analysis for example if you consume one apple you will get 100 level of satisfaction if you consume two bananas you will get 100 level of satisfaction means one apple is equal to two bananas it depends on the person to person no like that when you are substituting your commodities when which you will get the same level of satisfaction that is called indifference curve analysis okay so that is the thing it is there in this uh, first paragraph ma which yield the same level of satisfaction that is called indifference curve analysis okay so here which such combination are pointed graphically the result curve is called as the indifference curve indifference curve always slopes in a convex state okay so assumptions assumptions is nothing but rules what are the rules you need to follow the consumer should be rational rational is nothing but he or she should be expect more satisfaction he or she should must and should he must or she must should expect 
satisfaction that is called rationality rationality also we can there are two goods we should have x good and y good with with the help of one good we cannot perform this indifference curve and the uh, th thing is the price of the goods and the market uh, demand whatever you are having it should be same the consumer taste preference should be also same everything whatever the assumptions we have already learned in the previous two chapters no so that assumptions also you can make a list over here okay so that is the assumptions see here example combinations a person is there b person is there c person is there d is there e is there x is for example apple Y is a uh, banana you think okay if a person is consuming one apple he will get 100 a z level of satisfaction for example 100 level of satisfaction if he eat 15 bananas he will get 100 level means one banana is equal to 15 sorry one apple is equal to 15 bananas that is the person of a what is the the B is thinking if he eat two apples, he will get the same satisfaction. If he is eating level uh, bananas, he is getting the same apples. Means two apples is equal to level bananas. Like that, substitution of the commodities to get the same level of satisfaction is called indifference curve analysis. How it will be indifference curve analysis? It will always be like this. See what we, uh, we have already uh, plotted this on the diagram. No, So this is the indifference curve analysis we are having. And what are the properties? What are the properties we are having? Ma? The first one is higher level of indifference curve represents higher level of satisfaction. Means higher level of indifference curve. When you increase your indifference curve, it will give satisfaction of the more level of satisfaction you will get. How will you get more level? See here, indifference curve 1 is giving more satisfaction than indifference curve 2. Means the topmost one gives the most satisfaction. I see... 3 curve is higher than IC2 and IC1. IC2 indifference curve 2 is uh, higher than IC1. Like that when you increase your indifference curve automatically your satisfaction also increase. When higher in increasing higher in the satisfaction that is the first property you are having. Ma. Second is indifference curve always slopes downwards. It always slopes downwards from left to right like this. Okay. So this is called indifference curve. In a C shape it will be. Means it is nothing but always slopes downwards from left to right. That is the graphical representation. Indifference curve cannot intersect. It should not intersect. Okay. Commodity X and commodity Y. Means two indifference curve, three indifference curve we are having. Means it should not intersect like this. Okay. So that is the diagrammatic representation compulsory. Fourth one is indifference curve are always uh, convex to origin. It is always convex to origin. How it will always convex to origin is nothing but it should be always in a C shape. C shape I have said no this is convex. This is concave. It should not be in a reverse C. It should always be a C that is called convex to the nature. Fifth one you are having, it should not touch any horizontal or vertical lines. Means the indifference curve always should float on the middle of the graph. It should not touch on x axis. It should not touch on y axis. That is the thing fifth point. Sixth point is ma. Indifference curve always substitute and complementary. So these are the six properties we are having of the indifference curve. Uh, and third one you can look after this also that is consumer surplus theory what is this consumer surplus theory is nothing but uh, how a consumer is willing to keep his uh, income for the pers uh, for the satisfaction of his consuming okay according to the marshall the consumer surplus are excess of the price means how much he is willing to pay rather than without the thing over that okay see here consumer surplus is the simple thing ma what is that means tu is equal tu minus p of q p into q means tu is nothing but total utility p is price q is quantity means if a person is having 100 rupees he is willing to pay only 80 rupees for that product 
okay if the product is 10000 rupees or 20000 rupees he is willing to pay only 80 rupees for that product that is called consumer surplus theory consumer surplus is theory is nothing but the excess of price which a person would be willing to pay rather than to go without the things over that means how much he is willing to pay that is important so this is the answer not important uh, much for the four marks it is important you can make a look after this also anyway i have shared this pdf in the telegram group so this is the uh, diagrammatic representation of consumer surplus if you're having any doubts let me know in the comment section that two questions law of supply and uh, indifference curve uh, out of that two we can expect one question definitely okay so all the very best for your preparation uh, let me know in the comment section if you're having any doubts see you in the next video bye bye everyone